What can you do on the London Underground in summer that a cow can't? Find the central line, because they can't see red. Oh, oh. so oh, inadvertently good. you're heading in the right <laughs> direction. <laughs> Central line is the clue. Central line is the clue. Central line is the hottest of the lines. Yes, is it that, uh, that people, is correct. What people do on a really hot tube in the summer is say, well, they wouldn't even treat livestock like this. Well, you couldn't say that if you're a cow, because you are livestock. <laughs> that, that is actually, weirdly, the correct answer. So... The central line is the hottest line on the tube. It regularly reaches temperatures in the summer that exceed the legal limit for transporting cattle. Oh. In 2019, a journalist recorded a temperature of 36.6 degrees centigrade. That's 100 degrees Fahrenheit in old money on a central line carriage when leaving Mile End. So one of the problems is it's one of the early lines. Mm. And when those early engineers, they didn't leave any space around the trains for ventilation or air conditioning or so on. So it's snugly wrapped in the surrounding clay, a bit like a blanket. But here's a really good thing. What what do you think they do now with the abandoned stations, of which there are several? Do they put big air conditioners in? Well, that'd be pointless. It's abandoned. I don't know about <laughs> that. Listen, I don't know a lot about air conditioning, Sandy, as is apparent. Yeah. But I wondered if they could use it at the next station and somehow puff it down the line. <laughs> You're right, you don't know very much. <laughs> I'm going to give you a point for not knowing very much. <laughs> In fact, they use them as heat reservoirs, which warm homes in the winter. So City Road in the Old Street area currently heats mm. a thousand homes in Islington. So it's almost yeah. like yes. what I said, only the opposite of what I said. <laughs> Before the tube, first tunnel in London, any thoughts? Under the Thames? Yes, under the Thames, absolutely Greenwich right. foot tunnel? Yeah. Uh, no, the Thames tunnel. The Thames tunnel? The Thames tunnels. Yes, the Thames tunnels. Where's that one? So it was started in 1825 and it still has trains going through it, but that is oh. a picture of it is entitled A Correct View of the Thames Tunnel. Mm. It was the first time engineers had tunnelled under a major river. So Mark Brunel Isambard's father, he said he worked out how to do it by watching shipworms pooing. <laughs> yeah, so when a shipworm, technically called a teredo, burrows into wood, its head is protected by a sort of tough like, helmet-like shell and it digests the wood and then it excretes it out behind itself as a sort of hard residue that then lines the tunnel. And strength is really clever. So and clever. He, I know, isn't that so brilliant, right? And he imitated this with a tunnelling shield, so it was an iron grid, right? And it pressed against the face of the tunnel when the workers are digging out the earth between the grid squares. And as they did that, others followed behind and reinforced the tunnel that they were creating. It took about 16 years to complete. They progressed about four inches every day. Uh, who hasn't <laughs> been there? Uh, and <laughs> it was never really suitable for horse-drawn vehicles. In the end, it was just filled by souvenir sellers. And um, that correct view, passive-aggressive labelling of that picture, yeah. was that one illustrator having throwing some shade at another illustrator? No, it was throwing shade at the fact that it should have been just nice ladies and gentlemen walking up and down, and, in fact, it was full of vagrants and uh, acrobats and ne'er-do-wells. Acrobats? Yeah. People used to go down and entertain... Street entertainers. They love a tunnel. They love... <laughs> <laughs> the past is very odd place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah.